Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Jeremiah 34 and 35. Now, what's interesting in these two chapters is that in both instances, it looks like when a community is in disobedience and they are about to be disciplined by God, the grace of God, it's like it's hanging over them. And it's like God willing them to turn. And in one instance, they nearly do when they treat their slaves kindly. And in the other instance, there's a glimmer of hope for a, a community among the Israelites who, um, who were honoring God by obeying him in the way they ate and the way they lived. So let's have a look at verse 1 of 34. When Nebuchadnezzar was fighting against um, Jerusalem, and he had surrounded Jerusalem, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah to go to King Zedekiah of Judah and tell him, listen, the Babylonians are outside. Imagine being the prophet going to tell the king this. The Babylonians outside. This is what's going to happen. They're going to burn the city down. You're going to get captured. You're going to get taken off to Babylon. But listen, here's God's promise to you. You're going to die peacefully. And so he told this to Zedekiah. While there were, you know, all the cities had been taken other than Lachish and Ezekiah. Those are the only two that hadn't and, and Jerusalem at this particular point. Anyway, so Zedekiah, in a moment of compassion, sends out a decree that they're going to make a covenant to let all the Jewish slaves free. So quite clearly people had sold themselves into slavery to get out of debt. So everyone was free. Uh, the Hebrew slaves were all free, male and female, all of them. The officials agreed. And then all of a sudden, because Babylon armies seemed to retreat, they left the siege for a moment. The nobles suddenly decided, no way, we're going to take all our slaves back. So I can't imagine what it must have been like going to find people who are now freed men and turn them back into slaves. That, that couldn't have been a pretty sight. Anyway, but uh, God was not happy with that. He sent a message back to them. He said, listen, it is written in the law that every seven years you set your Hebrew slaves free. If people have sold themselves into slavery to pay their debt, you set them free. You've now profaned my name. You've gone against your word. And the, the Babylonians are coming back and they're going to sort this thing out. So it's like this little window of hope where the Babylonians retreat after this kindness has been, been issued. Chapter 35 the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah and says, go and find the Rechabites. So now remember, they're under oppression. The, ba the Babylonians are, are oppressing in. Go to the Rechabite family and invite them to come to one of the side rooms of the house of the Lord and give them wine to drink. The Rechabites arrive, but they refuse to drink some wine. But they replied, we do not drink wine because our forefather, Jehonadab, son of Rechab, Gave us the command, neither should you drink wine, build houses, sow seed, plant vineyards. No, you need to be nomads. And we've obeyed him ever since. So there's this little family among the rest of the disobedient Israelites who do exactly what God says. They're nomadic. They've been traveling. They haven't been planting crops. They've been drinking wine. Now, wow, God would say that to them. I don't really know. It was just a specific purpose that they had for them. Anyway, so God says, you need to learn a lesson from these Rechabites. They do not drink wine because they obey their forefathers' command. And then this is what God's promise to the Rechabites is. He says, listen, son of uh, Rechab, Jonadab is his name. You will never fail to have a descendant to serve me. God says, look, you're among a people that's going to go into captivity. You're among a people who are going to be disciplined. But I've got my eye on you. And just because the world's going mad, you don't have to go mad. And you haven't. And so there's this commendation in the midst of this carnage, commendation for those who are walking steadfastly while everyone else is losing their heads. And there's a commendation for the leaders when they start to become generous. My prayer as I read this book is, Lord Jesus, keep me generous. Keep me attentive to your word. I'm so glad that I'm not judged according to my righteousness, but Jesus' righteousness. But now that I'm living in Jesus, I want to be attentive to what God wants, to what He's called me to, to what He requires of my life.